guys, and welcome to another edition of The Point Podcast. If you've been tuned in, you know that we've been talking about the top qualities of a leader. And I've been sharing just from my heart what I believe a good leader looks like. And, and I want to make sure you understand that this isn't for just pastors. This is for any area of life. We need leaders today, and we need leaders who don't just claim to be a leader, but they truly are a leader. So we started with number one, you got to know the call on your life. And I know the call of my life. The call of my life is to change easily in the surrounding communities. I, I don't desire to go anywhere else. I, I don't desire to have a platform anywhere else. I want to be right here because that's the call on my life. Number two, and a key key component, and we've talked about, talked about this for two weeks, is you got to be willing to endure the pain of being a leader. I said it then, I'll say it now, and I'll continue to say it. You can only go as far as you're willing to suffer. And I broke that down into two different podcasts. I talked about self-inflicted pain, pain on my family, the pain of comparison, public opinion pain, and then loneliness. Then the second week, I talked about the pain of having to make major decisions because they affect so many people, spiritual pain, spiritual attacks that you'll go through, people leaving. You invest so much time, energy, money, even friendship into some people, and then they just leave. and it, it, They take a little piece of your heart every time. Hiring and firing. I mean, a lot of pastors won't fire. I, I take very seriously the call of my life, and there's people that we've hired that could no longer help us grow or we outgrew them or... Hiring and firing is part of leadership. And then there's the physical pain that I truly believe is kind of like Paul said, you know, I asked God to take this thorn away three times. I believe there's some physical pain that's part of what I have to go through. And number three was character and integrity. So many people want to lead, but they're different when they get behind closed doors. They're different when they're not on the stage. I want 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 to be the theme verse for my life. The Apostle Paul said it so well. He said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. That's in front of one person, by myself, or in front of thousands of people. I want my life to be very full of character and integrity, not just for the people that I'm leading, but to please Jesus Christ. The fourth quality. Was vision. You got to lead people where you're going, and you do that with great vision. You have to know where you're taking them, and you got to be able to communicate that vision. I know some guys that got a great vision, they just can't communicate it well enough for people to understand it. You got to be able to motivate people to follow your vision, especially when the chips are down, when things aren't going well. You are the chief fundraiser for the vision God's laid on your heart. I give greatly to this vision, and I give greatly to God. you got to lead by giving to your vision so other people will believe in you and give to the vision. And you got to believe this vision more than anybody else. you got to believe this is where we're going, and regardless. And last week I finished with... This week, number five, I want to give you just a, 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 a few more. You must never stop growing as a leader. I'll turn 62 in September, and I strive on a regular basis to become a better leader. I don't want to play that, well, I'm old. This has been working for 20 years. You know, Times are changing. You, you, you can't lead like like you did 20 years ago and expect to get the same results. So I just wrote down some thoughts on growing as a leader. Again, it's not from some book. This is just from my heart being a leader. Never think you've arrived. Never think you're this great leader that cannot get better. I'm good as I can be. I'm never, no, that's not true. Moses didn't retire till God said, hey, let's go. You're going to top of Mount Sinai or Mount Nebo. I'm going to show you the promised land. And then I'm going to bury you. Moses continued leading. I don't believe in such a thing as spiritual retirement. And I'm going to continue to try to grow as a leader until the day God the Father takes me home. One of the ways 
that I tried to grow. So no, I don't want to just tell you grow as a leader. Let me, t- let me tell you how I try to grow as a leader is, is self-awareness. It's hard to improve in areas that you don't know that you're doing a poor job in. Let me give you a great example. Anytime I take criticism, I take criticism all the time. I take it from social media. I take it from people. I take it from, I, I, anytime you're a leader in front of a lot of people, you're going to get criticized. Anytime I get criticized, I look at three things. Number one, who's it coming from? All right. Does it come from somebody that truly has my back, that loves me, or does it come from somebody who's just getting in their way? So I look at number one, where's it coming from? And secondly, I look at, is there truth to it? So if somebody says, all right, this is what you did, they're right. Hmm. Then the third thing is, what can I learn from this? So where's, who did it come from? Is there truth in it? And what can I learn from it? Well, I like to do that with my leadership. Okay. Where can I grow? Where my self-awareness? And if I feel like I'm lacking in an area, I'm going to search out how to get better in, in that area. Look at your strengths, your weaknesses, and opportunities. I know that I'm not good at going into the hospital and loving on people who are dying. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. So I have other people who do that for me. But there's parts of a leader that you can't just hand off to other people. You've got to take, you've got to, you got to take control of this. You've got to understand you're not good at this, and you've got to get better at it. And so how do you do that? All right? I ask people that are close to me, people that I can trust. It's only people I can trust. People I know got my back, people who got a heartbeat for the vision, and the people who want to, to, to move forward. I ask those type of people, okay, where do you see that I fall short? Where, where can I grow? And that's very few people because... A lot of people will take that as an opportunity to to take shots at you. I don't want you taking a shot at me. I want you helping me to become a better leader. I listen to leadership podcasts. Craig Rochelle's incredible. I mean, I started listening off all the guys I listen to, but you need to find the people you enjoy listening to because there's some guys that tell me, man, you need to listen to this guy, and he does nothing for me. I've got some that I listen to, and I love listening to their leadership podcast. I read leadership books. I've been reading leadership books since we started this church and continue to read them. I may not agree with everything in them, but there's always something I can learn to make me a better leader. I go to leadership workshops. I've really thought about, I would love to do a leadership workshop for for pastors, people in the community, people in the church. How do I become a better leader? Well, I've gone to workshops just like that. And again, don't always agree with everything, but I, always walk away with some gold nuggets that I can get better at. <clears throat> I want you to think, I didn't make this up. I, I saw this somewhere. I don't even remember where. But it's called SMART. S is specific. M is measurable. A is achievable. R is relevant. And T is time bound. Make some SMART goals on your leadership very specific where you're going to go, very measurable, okay? I want to get to this, and I want to see this as I get there. Is it achievable? I'd love to have a church of 100,000 people in Easley, South Carolina. Oh, we ain't got but twenty five to 30,000 people here. Where am I going to get the other 70,000? Okay, so it has to be achievable. It's got to be relevant to your vision and what you're doing, and then you need to put a time on it. Okay, I, I, pastors all the time, I've got this vision. 20 years later, you still got the vision, but nothing's happened. Okay, make some SMART goals. So here we go. Talking about the qualities of a great leader. The fifth one today was you must keep growing as a leader. Never stop. I'm not going to say, hey, this old dog can't be taught any new tricks, and it's been working, and I'm going to keep doing it this way because times are changing got to learn to change with them. Number six, and a huge one, and a lot of good leaders have problems with this, empowering others. That is training others to do your job. Let's be honest, guys. Like I said, I'm going to turn 62 in just a few weeks. 
not going to be passionate this church 10 years from now, but I want this church to be changing lives till the day Christ returns. Well, how's that going to happen if I'm dead? Well, I don't know. You train others to do what you're doing? It's called delegation. It runs throughout the pages of Scripture. Moses was trying to do everything. While out in the wilderness, his father-in-law Jethro shows up and said, Moses, you can't do this. You've got to give control to men. And he started naming off the numbers. You've you got to delegate your responsibility to others. And let me just be very honest about this. That can be difficult. I can remember when I started giving away a lot of my responsibility and giving it to Lawson and giving it to Matt and giving it to and giving it to. But here's the truth. I will probably be known after I'm dead and gone for dust of glory. Because dust of glory is changing thousands and thousands of people's lives. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I have an Old Testament workshop this weekend, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I got 10 guys coming in, and I'm going to teach them the Old Testament the way I taught my church. They're going to take this home and teach their people. And I will be training more pastors through the years. I'll probably be known for this, this, this dust of glory. Do you know why dust of glory came about? Because I delegated a lot of my other responsibilities to other staff members, which allowed me to concentrate more on just teaching the Bible. You've got to learn to give away responsibility in order to go to another level. There's no way I can do everything in this church. That's why I have such a great staff. Now, when it comes to delegation, when it comes to empowering others, there are some things that you have to do. First of all, you've got to give very clear expectations. Let the people know, this is what I want. Anytime I hire a new staff member, I use the exact same analogy. This is what I expect from you. Go wash my truck. I've never asked a staff member to do that, by the way. Just, just, this is just the analogy. Go wash my truck. I don't care how they do it. They go wash it. They take it to a place where you drive through it, or they pay somebody. This is what I want. When they return, I want a very clean truck. Now, they come back, and it's not the way I want. I'm not going to fuss at them. I'm going to explain. This is the way that I'd like for you to get my truck clean. They bring it back, and it's still not done right. Now, we're probably going to have a little bit of a problem. And the third time, they're no longer going to be on staff here. But I give very clear expectations. You cannot ask one of my staff members, what do you think Dean wants? And them not tell you. A very poor leader will blame others, and they don't know what you expect. I am very clear. I am very transparent. I tell you what I'm thinking, and I tell you what I expect. Give clear expectations. But then also, when it's not done right, it's not attack them. It's offer guidance. Okay, this is what you did good. This is what you did good. This is what I'd like to see you do better. And then address any shortcomings. Give them what they need financially with, with the goal of meeting your expectations. Learn to allow them to fail. Pick them up. But then be willing, if they can't do what you've asked them to do, to get somebody who can. So when it comes to empowering others, delegating, training others to do what you do. Now here's the truth though. There's a lot of things that are done in this church that nobody can do but me. And I will never ask other people to do that. So in saying that, I say from my stage regularly, I will never ask you to do something that I am not willing to do. This past Sunday, walking through the parking lot, picked up trash. Go through our hallways, pick up trash. If the bathroom needs cleaned, I'll clean the toilet. Now, I don't do that like I used to. We have people who do. But I'm never going to ask our people to do something. Here's where a lot of pastors say, you don't need to do that anymore, pastor. I still lead a life group. Why? Because I ask our people to. Okay, I still pick up hitchhikers all the time. Why? because I'm never going to ask somebody else to do something that I'm not willing to do. I believe in empowering others, but I also believe in leading by example. 
Last thing for today. We're talking about the qualities of a leader. Talk about know your call. Got to be willing to endure the pain. Got to have great character and integrity. I just want to be like Jesus. You got to have vision. You got to be the one behind the vision. Never stop growing as a leader and learn to empower others. Number seven, and I'm done. We ought to always strive to be like Jesus, and he was a servant leader. I haven't used a lot of verses today, and that was on purpose, because I want you to really try to memorize this one. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but came to give his life as a ransom for many. He did not come to be served. He came to serve. Jesus was the ultimate leadership example, and he did it by servant leadership. When it comes to servant leadership, please hear my heart right. As I, as I get ready to finish, please hear this. Have great gratitude. Be thankful for what God's given you. Don't, don't always want what everybody else has. Okay. I want you to think with me. Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17. What do you think the other nine disciples were doing? I want to go. How come we can't go? Well, how come? Because Jesus didn't decide for them to go there. Jesus loves us all the same, but he treats us differently. Take what God's given you. Use it to the best of your ability and be thankful for what you have and not always complaining for what you don't have. Just got back from Africa. And Africa's just as good for me as I am for them. Come home and hear people complain, moan, and groan because they got to walk across the parking lot. And those people walked miles begging God to do something great in their life. Be thankful for what you have. Use it to the best of your ability. So what's the point in all of this? We need better leaders in our churches, in our communities, in our schools, in life. And these are qualities that will make you better leader. Till next time.